In the previous video, we talked about one-to-one -one relationships. So a profile belongs to a user via the user ID, okay? So we can say, hey, I've got this ID, so I know that you belong to me. And we know that the user has one profile because it can go through all of the profiles and say, hey, I want a profile that has my user ID, okay? So that's how these two know about each other. However, what if a user has more than one thing? And let's have a look at what that might look like. So let's go up to our data here. We're gonna remove this and just simplify things a bit, get rid of the profile. Now, what if a user has many lists? So let's just imagine we're getting an array of lists and a list has a title. In this case, it might be equal to uh, shopping. Let's give it an ID as well. That's just gonna be something random that the server assigns it. And what else? I think that will do actually, just an ID and a title. Let's keep it simple. We can copy this and since we're inside an array, we can add another list and maybe another list. And then maybe this list is called life goals and one more, a list of friends, because maybe you're one of those people that likes to write a list of people that are their friends. Now, of course, these will need different IDs. If they don't, this will be inserted. This will be inserted and overwrite that one because they have the same ID. This will be inserted and override that one and you end up with one item in there. So they're all gonna have to have different IDs as well. I'm just putting in random numbers here. There we go. So let's just imagine this is what we're receiving from the server. The server saying, hey, We've got a user, this is what they look like. By the way, that user also has many lists and here are all of those lists sitting inside there. All right, so now we need to define that relationship. How do we do that? Well, first we're going to actually need a list. So let's go into item or any class and we're just gonna duplicate it. We're going to call this list, change the name to list, entity name is lists. Remember the entity will always be the plural of the class name. Well, not always, but you wanna try and keep that pattern as much as you can. All right, and then we're going to put relationships in here. I like to add that little comment there, as I said in a previous video. And then we're also going to register this list because as it stands, Vuke's ORM doesn't even know about it. So we'll go into the store. We're gonna copy this down, write list. And we're also going to need to import that. Copy that down and write list. There we go. So as you can see, once you've done this quite a few times, it gets pretty easy to add new classes. All right, so now that we've got our list, we need to actually define the relationship between the list and the user. So a list belongs to a user and a user has many lists. So let's just write that in comments. A list belongs to a user and then we'll jump into user here and we'll say here, a user has many lists. All right, so back to the list, how do we define this relationship here? Well, when we're fetching a user, this dot belongs to, and we pass through the user and I can import that up there, get rid of the colon, the semicolon, and it belongs to the user via the user ID field. So this is the exact same as a one-to-one -one relationship, okay? Because a list only has one user. So this part of the relationship is actually done the exact same as a one-to-one -one relationship in the previous video. So now we're going to have to add here user ID, this dot attribute, and we'll put through null there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We can remove this comment now. A list belongs to a user and it knows about that user via its user ID. Okay, cool. Now let's go to user and define the inverse of the relationship. So we'll say here for list, this dot has many pass through the list, and then we're going to pass through the field, which will be user ID, okay? Or the foreign key as it's also known. So that's great, the relationship's defined. Now let's go yarn serve to get our server up and running and make sure that everything's okay and we don't have any errors. All right, so, so far so good. Control I, let's go to the console, refresh the page. List is not defined. All right, so if we go into user, 
I put in list here, but I didn't import it. So let's import list. Save that, refresh the page, and everything seems to be working just fine. Awesome. Now, we're going to go to app.view, remove some of the boilerplate from our last video. So we're not dealing with profiles anymore, so we can get rid of that. And we'll keep the form there, and we'll keep the button as well, because we might deal with items a little bit later on. All right, so scrolling down, let's see if this request is actually working. So now that we've defined the relationship, Vux ORM will take this request and say, hey, this user has lists. I know about the relationship between the user and its lists. So I'm going to go ahead and insert all of these lists as well. So now if we refresh the page here, we go to view, we go to Vux, we go to commit or, then we go into entities. We can now see if those lists were actually imported. And yes, they were, which is fantastic. And you'll notice, see in here, I didn't give it a user ID. It automatically knows what the user ID is, okay? Like I said in the previous videos, Vux ORM will actually say, hey, since I'm sitting inside the user with this ID, I know what ID to give you. And it automatically sets the user ID. That is fantastic. Thank you, Vux ORM. All right, so let's go back here and let's start actually using this relationship. We can get rid of that. And now we're going to have user as a computed property, and that's going to return user.query because we want to start querying the user now, dot with, and a user has many lists, so we're going to pass through their lists. And then we're going to say, yes, get me that. Oh, actually not get, we're going to say find because at the end we want to find that user, all right? And let's quickly just double check the user ID. I think it's 28, yep, 28 and save that. So now we should be able to go to, oh, here we go, components, select. And what I can do is select our app here. And then we can see the user as a computer properly. And there's all the lists. So it worked. This is a good habit to get into, by the way, using uh, views tools. If you don't have this plugin, I highly recommend getting it. You can get it on Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox, and it just helps you to inspect everything. Anyway, back to our code. If we scroll up now, we can start throwing all of that data in. Let's create a div, and inside that div, we're going to have all of the lists. So let's say v-4 list in user.lists. And oops, I've forgotten the key. So let's go key is equal to list.id. And now we can just spit out the title of that list. So refresh the page, nothing's coming up because I actually called this body, which is probably a kind of silly name for a list. So I should probably dive back into list here. Let's change that from body to title. Change that to title as well. See if that will fix it. There we go. So now what we're doing is we're diving into the user and we're grabbing all of the lists associated with that user, which is great. It's working. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is actually make it so that a list can have many items, okay? So we're going to do another one-to-many relationship because a list has many items and an item belongs to a list. All right, so let's have a look at what that might look like in code. Now let's say this out. This, so this list has many items. So we'll put in item there. Import that, just check it imported fine. Yes, it did. And the way it knows that it's an item that belongs to this list is via the list ID. But currently, this item doesn't have a list ID, so let's go ahead and throw that in by going into the item class, relationships, and we're going to say list, this dot belongs, whoops, belongs to list, and let's make sure that that's imported via the list ID. And currently it doesn't have the list ID on here, so let's give it that attribute list ID, this dot attribute, and by default, we're going to set that to null. 
All right, awesome. So I've saved that. Let's just quickly refresh the page, check we don't have any problems, and we don't. Now that this relationship is defined, we should be able to use it. And I'm going to show you something really cool here. If your mind hasn't been blown yet, maybe this is the time that I blow your mind. So if we scroll down here, see here we're saying we want to grab the user with all of the lists. However, we want to go even deeper than that. We want the items as well. Well, we can just say dot items. And that is going to give us the user with all of its lists and the lists with all of its items as well. And let me just reiterate this. We're not going to end up with any reactivity problems, no matter how far we nest things here, because all of this data is pulled apart. That's part of the magic of Vuke's ORM. All right, so if you don't understand that, don't worry, it's not important for now. What's important is that we're grabbing the user with all of the lists, and we want those lists with all of the items. Okay, so let's scroll up. Now we actually need some items. So let's add some items to this list. And for the first item, let's just quickly check the fields of an item. It needs an ID, a body, and a list ID. By the way, the way I'm selecting all of this is by holding Alt as I double click on these different sets of text here. And then I go Control C and Visual Studio Code will copy them all so that I can just paste them all at once like that, which is really cool, really handy for this sort of thing. All right, so now the ID will be just something random. The body will be my, let's use something descriptive, banana. And then the list ID is going to be 623. But remember, we probably won't get that ID when we receive this data from the server. Uh, so Vuke's ORM will automatically say, hey, I know that that's the ID that I need. It's going to look into the object that it belongs to and say, all right, I'm going to set the list ID automatically. So that's really awesome. Let's add another item. Maybe we could say strawberries. Cool. All right, make sure those commas are in the right places. Save that. And let's just refresh the page to check we don't have any problems. And we don't. Now, why are we getting strawberries there? Ah, that's because in one of the earlier examples, we're actually already spitting out all of the items here. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down, get rid of this, scroll back up, and get rid of that list there. All right. So we're already iterating over all of the lists. And we can actually go one step deeper. So now we can write an unordered list in there, unordered list. And then inside that unordered list, we want to hold all of the list items. So we can say list item, I'm going to close off the tag there and say v-4 uh, item in list.item. So we're diving into this list here that we currently have. And then we're grabbing all of its items and we're going to set the text of this list item to the item dot. Is it body? What was it? Yes, the item's body. And then of course, this is going to need a key so we don't end up with reactivity problems. And that key will be the items ID. Awesome. Let's save that, refresh the page. And there we go. It's now automatically thrown in there. Now, there seems to be a problem here. We're only getting strawberries and we add a banana as well. And I think I know why. Yeah, it's because these both have the same ID. So let's set this one to 58. Refresh the page. Yeah, and everything's working now. So let's see if we can add some items to life goals and friends to finish up this tutorial. So if we scroll down now, here's our life goals list. Let's go items. And I'm just going to copy one of these here. That ID is going to have to be different, so set it to something different. Life goals uh, become, uh, what about, have my own web dev team. And then maybe we could have another one saying, finish the Vux ORM course also with an exclamation mark and this is going to need a different id save that and it shows up straight away isn't that amazing 
Think about all the functionality that we have received just from building these classes. I love it. Now, just to give you a brief explanation of what's actually happening here. What Vuxo RM is doing is what's called normalizing the data. And I spoke about this before, but let me just go over it again. So it's gone, hey, there's a user. Let's insert it into the database. It's also got a bunch of lists. So I'm going to insert all of those lists into the database, right? And while I'm at it, I'm also going to insert all of the items within that list into the database, okay? And so it's pulling all of this data apart. If we go here and we have a look, we'll say commit or entities. It's pulling all of this data apart. So now we're going to, for example, users data 28. So that's uh, the user, which is me, the user with an ID of 28. Notice that there is nothing in here by default, okay? So Vux ORM is not giving us any list by default. We have to actually say that we want to fetch those lists, which is good because it's efficient. So basically it's run in there and looked at the request and it's pulled everything apart. So here's the items that it pulled out of there, it pulled all the items out. It pulled all of the lists out as well. And I'm gonna say this maybe for the last time, maybe not. This is a great thing because it means we don't run into reactivity problems. Let's quickly review how we made all of this possible. First, let's go into the user class. We said that a user has many lists. And on that list, we know that it belongs to a user by the user ID field. So if we go into list there, this is how we know if the list belongs to a specific user. And the same thing is true for a list with its items. A list has many items. And the reason we know that that item belongs to the list is by the list ID sitting on that item. All right, and you can nest this to your heart's content. So isn't that awesome? And then we end up with this beautiful API where we can then query the data with ease. We just want the list and the list items, and then we find the user by its ID. Hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Thank you for your attention, and I will see you in the next video where we go through the has many by relationship. See you then.